An orbital space flight. This is the boundary of space as defined by NASA, the US Air Force and the FAR. To remain in orbit at this altitude requires an orbital speed of approximately 7.8 km per second. Orbital speed is slower for higher orbits, but attaining them requires greater delta V. The Federation Aeronautique Internationale has established the Kerman line at an altitude of 100 km. As a working definition for the boundary between aeronautics and astronautics, this is used because at an altitude of about 100 km. As Theodore von Kerman calculated, a vehicle would have to travel faster than orbital velocity to derive sufficient aerodynamic lift from the atmosphere to support itself. Due to atmospheric drag, the lowest altitude at which an object in a circular orbit can complete at least one full revolution without propulsion is approximately 150 km. The expression, orbital spaceflight, is mostly used to distinguish from suborbital spaceflights, which are flights where the apogee of a spacecraft reaches space, but the perigee is too low. Orbital spaceflight from Earth has only been achieved by launch vehicles that use rocket engines for propulsion. To reach orbit, the rocket must impart to the payload a delta V of about 9.3 to 10 km per second. This figure is mainly and gaining altitude, the main proven technique involves launching nearly vertically for a few kilometers while performing a gravity turn, and then progressively flattening the trajectory out at an altitude of 170 plus km and accelerating on a horizontal trajectory for a 5 to 8 minute burn until orbital velocity is achieved. Currently, 2 to 4 stages are needed to achieve the required delta V. Most launchers are by expendable launch systems. The Pegasus rocket for small satellites instead launches from an aircraft at an altitude of 39,000 ft. There have been many proposed methods for achieving orbital spaceflight that have the potential of being much more affordable than rockets. Some of these ideas such as the space elevator and rotavator require new materials much stronger than any currently known. Other proposed ideas include ground accelerators such as launch loops. Rocket-assisted aircraft, space planes such as reaction engines Skylon, scramjet-powered space planes, and RBCC-powered space planes. Gun launch has been proposed for cargo. From 2015 SpaceX have demonstrated significant progress in their more incremental approach to reducing the cost of orbital spaceflight. Their potential for cost reduction comes mainly from pioneering propulsive landing with their reusable rocket booster stage as well as their Dragon capsule, but also includes reuse of the other components such as the payload fairings and the use of 3D printing of a super alloy to construct more efficient rocket engines, such as their Super Draco. The initial stages of these improvements could reduce the cost of an orbital launch by an order of magnitude. An object in orbit at an altitude of less than roughly 200 kilometers is considered unstable due to atmospheric drag. For a satellite to be in a stable orbit, 350 km is a more standard altitude for low Earth orbit. For example, on 1 February 1958 the Explorer 1 satellite was launched into an orbit with a perigee of 358 km. It remained in orbit for more than 12 years before its atmospheric re-entry over the Pacific Ocean. On 31 March 1970, However, the exact behavior of objects in orbit depends on altitude, their ballistic coefficient, and details of space weather which can affect the height of the upper atmosphere. There are three main bands of orbit around the Earth. Low Earth orbit. According to orbital mechanics, an orbit lies in a particular, largely fixed plane around the Earth, which coincides with the center of the Earth, and may be inclined with respect to the equator. The relative motion of the spacecraft and the movement of the Earth's surface, as the Earth rotates on its axis, determine the position that the spacecraft appears in the sky from the ground, and which parts of the Earth are visible from the spacecraft. It is possible to calculate a ground track that shows which part of the Earth a spacecraft is immediately above. This is useful for helping to visualize the orbit in space flight. An orbital maneuver is the use of propulsion systems to change the orbit of a spacecraft. 
for spacecraft far from Earth, for example those in orbits around the Sun. An orbital maneuver is called a deep space maneuver, returning spacecraft onto a suborbital trajectory. Many spacecraft in low Earth orbit solve the problem of deceleration from orbital speeds through using atmospheric drag to provide initial deceleration. In all cases, once initial deceleration has lowered the orbital perigee into the mesosphere, all spacecraft lose most of the remaining speed, and therefore kinetic energy, through the atmospheric drag effect of aerobraking. Intentional aerobraking is achieved by orienting the returning spacecraft so as to present the heat shields forward tova.